there we go. There's a little bit of glare in the back because oh, it's so beautiful and bright yeah. in this room. There's some beautiful windows here. Yeah. Oh, we spent the night here in this beautiful place um, on the on the the property of what's Hilo the? Sharks Big <laughs> Island. Hilo Sharks Big Island. Tom Sharkey uh, owns this property and has grown cacao for years and we're over so, 20 years for over 20 years and mm. he's considered um the, the expert on the hawaiian islands and has helped a lot of other cacao farmers start their own farms growing cacao mm -hmm. and uh so it's really great that we get to stay here uh we got to talk to him yesterday um uh, while i was in here getting ready and just relaxing kyle yes. went out and walked around and got and to talk pollinated to some oh. vanilla <laughs> orchids I just found that out. He just came in and told me that he was talking to Tom for quite a while, but I didn't know he was pollinating. And he, he let me take <sighs> a cacao pod, which we'll open up later. That is so exciting. Um, let's just talk about that for a second. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, before we got really into and obsessed with cacao, we had no idea that this is where the, the cacao beans come from. Inside of a beautiful pod like this, and they can be red, orange, yellow. Uh, when they're not ripe, they're green. Uh, like a silvery color. That's true. They can be kind of silvery. Um, Dark red. We have another one. Yes. Uh, another color. Where's that? Uh, I think somewhere. it's outside. I'll grab it. Okay, he's going to grab that one. Yesterday, I picked this orange fresh off of one of their trees. Uh, they have some citrus, some avocados. Uh, they also grow vanilla. Uh, and coffee and we got to smell some of the vanilla oh my goodness it smells so good um kyle's made vanilla before uh when we lived in kentucky he made vanilla from, from the bourbon that local people um, or companies make there and that vanilla was great um kyle picked this one off the off the yeah, ground and i guess that this darker part he was telling me your head's not oh. anymore <laughs> He was telling me this darker part is actually a fungus, hmm. but that the beans on this one are probably still just fine because it looks like it's just kind of on the outer layer. But he's, but I guess they got like six weeks of just tons of tons of rain, and it's been really cool. And when that happens, sometimes the pods will get this um, fungus on it. And he says, but now it's drying up and, hmm. and stuff that it should, I think should be fine, but. He's really interesting to talk to. That <laughs> smells amazing. But this one, he said, was perfect and beautiful and really kind of him to let us take one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, um, he is a really nice man. And so is Anna. Who yes, is his fiance. His fiance, she was wonderful. Mm -hmm. She's the one who's fix fixed up this place and made it so cute. Uh, yeah. yeah, and... She's, she's just so thoughtful, uh, everything that's in, included in here. I won't go through all of it right now, maybe later, I don't know. But, like, the way she set this place up is, is insane. Not insane in a bad way, but insanely adorable. Yeah. Um, like, she, just one thing, like, she already has a perfectly packed beach bag <laughs> with everything you would need to take to the beach, but she's just as thoughtful in every corner of this place. It's so sweet. Yeah. And uh, we had some cacao tea this morning, which was really good. Yes, we've tried cacao tea before, maybe just once. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it was okay, but their cacao tea is and I don't, they, incredible. They make a sugar with their vanilla, and I don't know if it was the, the vanilla sugar that made it really good or if it was the tea uh. itself, but I need to try figure out why it was so good. Yes. Oh my fantastic. goodness. It was so good. He, uh, Kyle put half and half in his and I put um, oat, milk. oat milk in mine. And um, both of us had um, an amazing experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, today we're going to meet, what's her name? Um, okay, let me look at my text to see what her name is because it's a unique name that I haven't heard The chocolate much. company is Aloha Feels. Aloha Feels Chocolate. And her name is Casamaru, Kaz if I'm saying it right by sounding it out. Uh, and and she's been wonderful and really nice and mm -hmm. has been connecting with us. And we're going to try her chocolate today. Yes, we're going to her her cacao farm. She said it's a it's a small 
farm, um, but quite a few uh, Hawaii farmers have have farms that are quite small, and um, it just shows that it, starting small in any area of life is a is a great place to start mm -hmm. to start. Um, and then this afternoon, um, we're going to what's the other name? Looking Hamakua. Through, Hamakua chocolate, and we're we're going to meet Dan and. Uh, and her, her and Dan work, work closely together in, in the chocolate business. He's the one that, that helps ferment her cacao beans. Oh, cool. Yeah, and as I looked closer at my text messages this morning, I was like, oh, she told me that. I didn't register the, that that's, you know, how, how they know each other and um, what he does. But he has his own chocolate company also. <laughs> so we're excited for today, and we hopefully will get a chance to show you their farm. Mm -hmm. and talk and, about it later and talk yeah we, we'd like the opportunity to record talking to them now i'm dripping delicious juices on my skirt uh, <laughs> at least for a little bit we'll see how much we record them right kyle sometimes isn't sure how much we should or shouldn't record but i think we can just figure it out yeah, and that it, it will it will yeah we'll see what feels natural and good um because yeah, we don't need to record every single movement and word, and um, but like when they're explaining something really cool, definitely yeah. would be fun to record that and. Mm -hmm. Or when I feel like recording, yeah, we don't have to use every single thing we record. So. It's true, <laughs> and we can show you and introduce you to them and support them in their journeys oh. of chocolate production and. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about these tangerines is there's seeds in them. A lot of the stuff you get at the store, mm -hmm. you know, are genetically engineered to not have seeds. Yeah. There's quite a few, but, but it's so worth... Um, that they, they taste The amazing. delicious taste, and yeah. it's, like I'm, it's like I'm eating orange juice, except for tangerine, tangerine juice. <laughs> and one thing I'll say real quick before Kyle stops this video is... Um, <laughs> That there's this drink in almost every place you can eat here called Pog, and I didn't know that that was a drink. What is that? Pineapple, orange, and guava. Okay. Okay, tell me when you've started it. Oh, it's already started. Oh. It's been going this whole time. <laughs> that's fine. This that's is how, that's how you get good stuff, is you just let it go. Real stuff. That's Real true. Stuff. Okay, so I'm here with my friend. We're new yeah. friends. We met on Instagram. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Isn't it? Yes. yes. And uh, she's the owner of Aloha Fields Chocolate. Yes. And I'm so grateful that we've connected. Yes, likewise. Thank you. And uh, we're here at her, at her farm. It's a beautiful farm in Hawaii on the Big Island. Mm -hmm. So, so excited about that. Uh, so tell, tell us about your farm and about, you know, how long you've been doing this. Yes. Um, just tell us, tell us what you, you want us to know about what, what you're doing. <laughs> sure. Well, first of all, I started, um, the idea with all of this started in 2009 um, for the reason of advocating for slave-free chocolate, ethical chocolate making. That's um, great, we have that in common. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. And that's why I was so happy to, to know what you are doing. Good. Because I've been thinking, shall I sell the chocolate in stores or, but I keep on saying that, no, I want somebody who knows the value to, mm. to, to have the chocolates, so there's a story behind connection and yeah, the whole purpose. Definitely, and so. we're, we're going to have her chocolate in our, in our shop <laughs> yeah. very soon. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I happen to have empty land um, to use, so um, 2014 I had uh, I think it's 230 trees. I used to have 250 more, but this is enough for now, and then I'm planting more. Today, actually, we are oh. preparing. So. Oh, fun. Oh, great. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. Need any help? Yeah, we'd <laughs> yeah. love to help you if you want help. <laughs> actually, the, the plants are at um, your place. Tom Sharkey has been preparing them. Oh, oh maybe yes. we could bring that back over to you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure that out later. That's right. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, the whole purpose of this farm is to uh, for people to know more about what's happening in the chocolate industry and to be more conscious and aware um, 
that the cacao has been produced without slaves, ethically and fairly. Um, uh, yes, so that's really the purpose of this whole thing. And to eat and produce and share really delicious <laughs> And to enjoy it, right? And enjoy to chocolate. Enjoy it. Yes. yes, but that's exactly why I started my business was I didn't really know what to do to help no. with the slave-free chocolate yeah. movement. Yeah. And um, so I decided to open up a shop selling other people's chocolate because I don't grow it and I don't know no. how to make it. No. Yes, and so I love, I love uh, meeting you and supporting you in yeah. that. Yeah, we had, um, she thought, a lot of people don't want to do the research, right? No. It's just it's just hard to get them to figure it out themselves, and so to be able to do the research and say, "Hey, this is this is this company, this yes. is that company," yes, yes, and say yes, everything exactly. on this table, you can feel good about. Exactly. And if you want a story, you know, we, we're trying to figure out the stories so that we can because yes. people like the stories. Exactly. Yes. That's my whole point. Yeah, because yeah. it's easy to like if you really want to commit. It's easy to just look at the labor. Oh, it's fair trade. It's this, that, and but there's so much to the industry that you can't always be sure. Yeah, and well, I want to be sure. Yeah, so do we. we've learned. We've talked about it. You know, we've told people about fair trade. How it's a certification, yes. and so you people pay for that. Yes. and it's sometimes you don't know exactly. Like you'll see bars that say, "Oh, it's 35 percent fair trade," yes. or it's, and so you still don't under know. It's not still not a personal connection. And no. Right. And we've realized that direct trade or being to bar uh, is, is, a, is a lot closer to home, of where the chocolate came from. Yes. And we didn't know that as we started on this no, journey of figuring it out. It's, no. um, as, you, as you read different things, you just start to, to say, oh, wait a second. It's not all created equal, no. equal, even if there's people out there who are who are trying. I think there's a lot of good people Absolutely. who are producing fair trade chocolate and have have really great intentions. Mm -hmm. But we're so, we're just really into these stories and yes. figuring out exactly where it's coming from. So, yeah, okay. so are you doing just chocolate here, or do you do just chocolate? Uh, just chocolate? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. I know we were like at Tom Sharkey's. He was doing vanilla, like he has yes, vanilla right. going on his that's trees and. Seems like a lot of work. He yes, this morning good. he went out and we went up and down the trees and he's we were looking for flowers that so, were coming out to because you have to self pollinate. pollinate. Yeah, self pollinate. Yeah, yes. I think he does it every morning. Yeah, I was getting ready for the day and Kyle went out to go on just a little walk around around his cacao farm yeah. and got got the chance to help him pollinate just a little bit and hear a little bit about that. Because his at his house it's just a, it's not very many trees. I think he says. The stuff by his house is his hobby farm. Yes. Yes. And then he has other stuff yes. like around that yes. he does more. I, I but... share some my thoughts with him too. Oh, cool. oh, okay. That's great. Because he really helped me to get started up. And, yeah, he's very generous. He seems like a nice guy. He's very nice, very nice. Yeah. Very generous and uh, committed. Real true farmer. <laughs> he loves yeah. what he does. Like... You could tell he's out. He's always doing I mean, th We've only been there for a day and he was just out. <laughs> doing something all the time. Yep. Yeah. So, so, awesome. Well, let's take a look at some of her mm -hmm. cacao pods. Okay, so we're here with Alan, and Alan works here on this cacao farm, and uh, Tell us about yourself. How long have you been working on this farm? Have you worked on other cacao farms? Yes, I've been in egg since 1995 and I, work, oh. I presently work at Ford Farm. And this is the fifth farm. Okay, the fifth farm. That's really cool. Uh, that means you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So, um, Are you what? I hear you're planting new trees. Is that? Yes. Uh, 150 she ordered, so we're going to start in 50 a month. Okay. Go all the way up. So how do you have to, she said that the, the ones that are over here weren't planted completely right. Right, they didn't pre-dress the soil and they didn't put a merit for the bugs. Oh. So, as you can see, the main speed is in the leaf. <laughs> That's what all these leaf damage is, is from lace beetles. Okay. But then you see the new growth, mm -hmm. there's no holes. Oh. So this is all like uh, the temperature changes, they jump off the ground into the plant 
like five o'clock. Okay. So marriage is supposed to put in the ground and then we'll take care of it. Good. So with the new ones, um Material. Is that what you're doing with the stakes for? Yeah. You stake it and take the holes and pre dress it. Come here. And do it the correct way so Come there's no problem. Yes. So they grow a little better and Hi, sweetie. <laughs> That's yeah. It's rough. That's sad. That it's a lot of time and effort into yeah. these trees that they didn't get done quite right. That's too bad. But you can see the new shoots. Yeah. They're coming up nicely. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And, and they have grown. <laughs> okay, tell me how to pronounce your name again. Kazemaru. 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 There you go. <laughs> okay, I'll say it the best I know how. Kazemaru. Uh, <laughs> Maru. Maru. I know. I know. <laughs> okay, Kazemaru. There you go. Kazemaru. Okay. She, uh, but now it's left me what I was going to say that she was telling us. Oh, you were saying that when you first started this farm back in 2014 that, that you had the little baby trees and uh, it took maybe two years and then you started to get some, some cacao pods and get, get fruit so that's that's exciting that when you start these new ones it won't it won't take too long before no. you'll be able to yeah. start har harvesting them right so very exciting anything else? are there better time i mean the weather here is probably the same i mean is there a rainy season oh yes yeah there is is there better times here to plant the trees than others it's about now no. about now is a good time is it because it's less rainy? If it's too rainy, that's no good because we need the sun too. But um, during the summer, it's too dry. <laughs> okay. Um, so, but now it's a good time. time. March to May. Long hours. Long hours. Gotcha. Very good. So are the days, do the days get longer and shorter here? Is it, or is it close up to the equator where the, it kind of stays the same most of the year? It's not so big. Not big. Yeah. It's crazy we have, you know, in Utah, it'll get dark at five o'clock in the winter time. Yeah. Uh -huh. And in the summertime, it doesn't get dark until 9.30. So this huge yeah. swing of daylight yeah. hours. Yeah, it's, it's very different depending on the time of year. But it's just getting to planting time in Utah right now too. If you plant too early there, your frost yes. kills everything. Yes, it will start to feel really warm and you'll think that it's summertime and a couple of weeks later it's snowing. Yeah. And it just goes back and forth. Yeah, we had snow, it was 70, Four degrees like two weeks ago beautiful oh, yeah. and then when we came here it was 31 oh, with that like was that was the high <laughs> and so it's like these huge temperature swings in April it's it's just a crazy time of year you get all excited for summer and it's beautiful <laughs> and then the next day it's snowing and yeah. 50 mile an hour winds and oh yeah April is the April cool month that's right that's yes, it is I think I think that's true we lived in Kentucky um, for seven years also and it went back and forth, back and forth too, but the growing season was longer. They always said there to not plant anything until after the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. Um, so, in Utah, I don't, I, I don't think there's any... It's Mother's Day. Is it after Mother's Day? It's Mother's Day, Day okay, in Utah. Out, but, cool. Yeah, I had... I'm going to stop there. And she just gave us a tour of her cacao farm. It's beautiful. And now I have her chocolate bars that... Uh, this is her chocolate company, Aloha Fields. Can I have one, Ty? Yes, you want to hold one? Yep. Okay, which just, one? Just give me one of them. Okay. So, <laughs> we talked about showing that one for sure. Yeah. Uh, Casa Maria has a mission to uh, uh, advocate for slave-free chocolate, right? Yes. And we have that in common, and she's been on this journey for quite a few years, mm -hmm. uh, and is very passionate about that. And she partners with... Um, an organization. Do you want to tell, tell us about that organization and why you like it? Sure. Okay. So the uh, organization is slavefreechocolate.org uh -huh. um, and we are in um, constant contact of what's happening in the industry and where to put the attention. And, um, we just collaborated. She organized and collaborated on, um, what do you call it, a bill or petition bill? Mm -hmm. um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so through that organization, I every year donate from the 
we don't really have any revenues to talk about. But mm. <laughs> she, has, she has a small company and small Very plantation, small. but it's beautiful. And what she's doing is making a difference. Um, yeah. We've noticed that um, taking any steps is better than just, you know, yes. sitting back, not doing anything to help and advocate for these people. So, nice way to, yeah. so small steps, right? <laughs> Donate to an organization in um, Africa, in West Africa, Ivory Coast, who um, who um, takes care of children who have been or are in the risk of going to be enslaved on the cacao farms. And also, I am in constant contact with them to see what's going on down there. Yeah, I've heard most of the world's chocolate comes from the Ivory Coast, yes. from that area, Ivory right? Ivory Coast in Ghana is the world's majority of for the chocolate comes from there. Okay. And um, so the slavefreechocolate.org, um, you were telling me that, um, just like you said, they they help to partner with, with other people who are helping to rescue children um, yes. and give them a place to, to live after they're rescued um, from from being on these cacao farms, but also that they, uh, they, they find children who are at risk of being trafficked. Yes. Yes. And if they need a place to come and stay, then they can come and stay there also, which is just so beautiful. And you're giving to organizations like that. Mm -hmm. That selling the chocolate helps, but I also want to give directly to organizations that are that are. <laughs> oh, that's okay. It's it's a nice breeze coming in here. Um, it feels it feels wonderful. <laughs> it feels so good. Um, so selling the chocolate can help, but we want to partner with people who are. Working directly Boot, like with boots these, on the with ground, these right? Children. Yeah, with so, the, yeah, the fruits on the ground. And boots, boots just, on the ground. What? Boots on the ground. Oh, boots! I'm like, I've never heard that. Fruits. <laughs> I don't know. What fruits on the ground. <laughs> boots, <laughs> boots with a B. Boots. I'm like, there's a little bit of wind. I don't know what you're saying. Um, well, because it, you know, it's interesting because we can feel so removed from. Oh, yeah. you know, I think that's what with the chocolate industry and the whole. Totally, we were talking. Recently, about how we had no idea as a kid where chocolate. I got this Hershey's bar, and it yeah. chocolate tasted great. And mm -hmm. I got it for Easter and for Christmas. And whenever I wanted a Snickers bar, I got it. And it you was don't, easy and cheap. Yes. It was just chocolate. You don't think about where chocolate comes from. It was just chocolate. Yes. And and sometimes when you remove yourself from that, so it's nice to have people that are close to it, and also like growing it yourself and yeah. it, that makes you realize the labor intense like yeah. how intensive it is and right. what's required mm -hmm. and paying your own farmer yes. um, you you know exactly what goes into it and um, that people are working really hard and uh, that these children being trafficked or children that are born into the industry that have to work on these cacao farms mm -hmm. that they they need people advocating for them and, and help, helping so Thank you for what you're doing. It's Likewise. Beautiful. Thank you. Aloha feels chocolate. For um, consumers, I think what they need, well, of course, slavery chocolate, but um, companies and people like you who do all the research and make it a little bit more easy and accessible mm -hmm. to actually get hold of the good, good stuff, the yeah. good chocolate that is produced. Um, with good intentions and fairly and for everybody in the line of it. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> people are busy and um, it's a very complicated industry. It it, is. It's not so clear cut too. And it's like, it's, it's a lot of um, unjust, injustice going on on the ground too yeah. in, the, in the cacao industry. And um, if you have a company that just, okay, we did all the research for you and it's Tastes great. Yeah, <laughs> it tastes fantastic. Yeah, yeah. we've had. And on the, on the back of her package, it even says slave free, guilt free. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And I, I think there is a way, that, first of all, the um, majority of people, all of us, are in information overload. Yeah. And it's like we can't take, uh, you know, there is a limit for how much we is. can take. Plus, I, I felt it's very important to not hammer like hard, dark, you know, heavy facts. Mm -hmm. right. There's enough of that and people are going through their own suffering in yeah. life. Yes. I wanted to make it light and, and, and loving. Yeah, and, right. And, and um, that's why I didn't want to do just advocate, advocacy, but also that you 
comes with the good flavors and make it light loving and you know fun make it enjoyable yeah, right you enjoy. can you can have chocolate, chocolate that comes all. yeah that comes from yes. a great place and that yes. is fun to eat exactly. and make it happy and that's what I told her the first time we did the chocolate taste with don't make people depressed no. you know don't but you were told that also yeah i was told that too like no 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 don't talk about the slave free because people just want to enjoy and i'm like yes but i know how to talk about it you could talk about it people, yeah Yeah. Oh my goodness, it looks so alive. <laughs> That's cool. Here, so try. Put that like keep oh that yeah there. that i throw in the, that white bucket over there yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i can roast all the little ones and like yeah. this this kind of thing you throw, yeah, throw, you throw that, that out yeah. but see yeah. so in other words you know nobody wants to buy this but i can roast that and then grind them up nobody's gonna care even if i just it's just you know yeah. and you can't stand out here when it's sun shining so this is a real good rainy day project but you know so i spread them out this last time see what i had two boxes last time now you're getting one so I had two boxes, and what I usually do is I put a one box out here as thin as I can, 